Hey guys, Budcat7 here. Okay, it is Saturday, July 27, 2019, and I'd like to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research Channel here on YouTube. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And if you would kindly click that like button, guys. Very nice of you. Thank you. All right, so listen, we got to get to the rest of this article that I've been doing videos on for the past. It was a two-parter, so there's a lot of information in there. It's difficult to cover, I guess, in just a couple of videos because of all these sort of tangential things and other things that are, just don't make any sense, but or make a lot of sense. And, you know, the problem is, is that it conflicts with mainstream, um, you know, historical um, fantasy um stuff that they throw at us so look you know my bullshit detector works 100 percent i just you know i'm in rare form today so you know i might use a little new york colloquialisms from around town here i'm sorry about that but you know i just gotta call it when i see it sort of like gerald salente from uh trends journal a friend of mine Okay, it was Gerald Salente, all right. When he was a kid, right, he he's into politics and stuff. He's riding around. He's from the Bronx, and his father's like, uh, you know, Italian immigrant, and um, he's talking all the stuff, politics and whatnot. And his father interrupts him in the middle of his talk, and he turns around and he says, "Papagallo," he goes, "Parrot." What do you repeat everything you hear? Use your own mind. Use your own brain wrong with you so he got a lesson from his old man when he's a kid papagallo parrot what do you repeat everything you hear use your own mind okay that's what he said all right and john taylor gatto told us this is a guy from new york too okay he was named new york city teacher of the year 1989, 1990, 91, New York State Teacher of the Year in 1991, okay, was an American author and school teacher who taught in the classroom for nearly 30 years. He devoted much of his energy to his teaching career, then following his resignation, authored several books on modern education, criticizing its ideology, history, and consequences. He is best known for his books, Dumbing Us Down, The Hidden Curriculum of Compulsory Schooling, and The Underground History of American Education, a School Teacher's Intimate Investigation in the Problem of Modern Schooling, which is sometimes considered to be his magnus opus. So here's this super smart guy, he's a teacher from New York State, and he tells us the little problems here with um, education, and this is the education that we all got, okay? But all of us, all the subscribers to this channel know, and I know, that we didn't get our real education until after we left school. Right, guys? That's when we got our real education. And some people got an education, other people just follow sports and drink a lot of beer and, you know, a big fat slop. So, in any case... Let me just look at his main thesis. Gatto asserts the following regarding what school does to children in dumbing us down. It confuses the students, number one. It presents an incoherent ensemble of information that the child needs to memorize to stay in school. Apart from the tests and trials, this programming is similar to the television. It fills almost of the free time of children. One sees and hears something only to forget it again. It teaches them to accept their class affiliation. It makes them indifferent. It makes them emotionally dependent. It makes them intellectually dependent. It teaches them a kind of self-confidence that requires constant confirmation by experts, provisional self-esteem. It makes it clear to them that they cannot hide because they are always supervised. Okay, so... That's what this guy Gatto said. This is the kind of people who leave comments, ignorant comments on a channel and other people's channels too. So, you know, that's the education that they got, okay? And they haven't been able to break free of that because they didn't know that you got your real education after you got out of school. Like us. So, in the first video, we went over this article by Jason Jarrell and Sarah Farmer about um, 
the ancient earthworks in North America, su suggesting that there was some pre-Columbian European contact or even colonization. And that's their thesis. That's not mine. And I think it's a possibility, obviously. But, you know, from my idea of the new research or some of the research that was done in the past, okay, we have human habitation in the Americas as early as 250,000 years ago according to the lady in Michael Cremo's um, documentary there, the BBC documentary, and also in his film, um, I forget the name of it, with Charlton Heston, but, so, something about um, man's forbidden history or whatever, I guess, so, something like that, but, you know, that lady in that film, you know, more or less said that, you know, some habitation and societies existed possibly in the Americas, you know, habitation in the Americas as early as 250,000 years ago, so why shouldn't it be the other way around? That's my idea about it anyway, from studying the more modern archaeology in the South America, where they say it goes back 30 to 40,000 years possibly now, you know, which predates Sumeria and Mesopotamia, so maybe, you know, there's archaeologists and anthropologists, you know, in Charles Lee Mann's book that quote to him that, you know, say that, you know, maybe Mesopotamia isn't the cradle of civilization, maybe it's the Americas, and if that's the case, folks, then this whole thing where it's Asian influence you see there and African influence, well, maybe it's the other way around, okay? Maybe the diffusion went out from the Americas, not into it from elsewhere. You understand? That's what I'm putting forth on my channel. That's my hypothesis based on this modern research that they've been doing and what I've known already. Okay, about this lady who found the uh, artifacts in Strata that was 250,000 years old. Okay, so they keep going further back in time with these other archaeology, uh, archaeological finds and sites in South America and um, uh, Central America. So why shouldn't it be that way? So in any case, you know, they that I'm not robbing them of their hypothesis, but it seems it's based on this new world bias that crawls into everybody's minds. It's got to be that way. It can't be the other way around. Well, I say bullshit. I'm sorry. I'm calling bullshit on that. Okay? So they go over that in this a bit. And they say how um, the bigger people, uh, you know, by... It says the bigger people expanded out the Iberian Peninsula into Western Europe and the Mediterranean between 2900 and 2500 BC. So, credited with introducing metallurgy, which nobody knows where that comes from. Okay. They don't, it was these people or whatever, you know, who knows who it was, and they don't know. But in any case, they're talking about these beaker people and how they made these hinges and these similar hinges were built by the uh, mound people in North America. And they talk about the Adena mounts and how they're absolutely similar, but not only similar really, but almost identical um, or identical to um, these European mounts that are found in Long Barrow, Bell Barrow, Bowl Barrow. Druid Barrow, these types of mounds found in Western Europe, okay, and here's these bowl and bell barrows designs and whatnot, and you have absolutely identical ones here in uh, the Americas, okay, so they're putting this forth in their article here, uh, the similarities, etc., talking about also found in New York State, which, uh, you know, whatever mounds are left in New York State, folks, I'm sure they've been bulldozed for a Sam's Club or whatever it is already a long time ago, for ye old Sam's Club. Okay, so they go over the similarity between the burials and the types of burials there are and what's found in those burials, etc., etc. It's just these uh, very, very interesting similarities and, you know, it's just something that can't be ignored. Okay? Then we worked on this, the second part of the article here that shows this Adina person over here. All right, so, you know, this is a reconstruction of one of these skulls and how the phenotype might be, and you absolutely see that these people are not homo sapiens, okay? 
This is the thing with cranial skull deformation. If you start out with a totally normal skull, okay, and start deforming it, all you're going to end up with is a totally normal skull that's deformed in some way. Yes, it's grown longer by the simple fact of the cranial deformation, puts pressure on it to squeeze it up or whatever, but these people have absolutely the largest craniums in the world, and they more or less say in the research that was done in the past there that... They already started with that, okay? So it's just it's a it just they're not coming out and saying it. Obviously, that only has to be one human being from the past or whatever, and this idea still proliferates today in science, okay? But you know that's not true at all. It's just a theory, and they keep on finding. Well, they found a Neanderthal, and now Denisovans, and this other kind with a tail, and a little miniature guy in Indonesia that's 20 or 30 or 40 thousand. You know, it's just, they're all over the map, and so just don't pay any attention to that, okay? It's nonsense, more nonsense out of them. They don't know, okay? So showing the beaker people here and the occipital um, cranial deformation that was specific to the people here. These are the beaker people, okay? And they say it's brachylocephalic, but there's no way of telling that proof positive. I'm sorry that it's not, the, they're basing it on cranial deformation today, but it doesn't increase the size of the skull. You see, so it's, it's a ridiculous hypothesis of theirs. It's, it's, yes, there, there's some relationship there, but it doesn't explain the increase in size. These people have, are obviously of a larger phenotype, slightly more robust, or whatever cockamamie stupid phrase they're going to use, euphemism, to hide the fact that there's bigger hominids from the past, folks. Giant skeletons. Besides these similarities, Neolithic and Bronze Age burials in Europe have yielded very large skeletons similar to those often found in Adena mounds. How interesting is that? Yeah, but well, let's ignore it. Because then, you know, what's going to happen is that if, you know, giants are real, then, the, you know, the religious people are going to go crazy. And the people who are against religion, they're going to go even crazier. See, so what are they going to do now? A truly gigantic specimen has been documented from castellanau Lelez, southern France, in 1890 while excavating the Neolithic strata of a burial mound. Georges de la Pouge discovered the humerus tibia and femoral shaft of an individual he estimated to be between 11 and 12 feet tall. Oh boy, that sure is big. Let me tell you something, if you're 11 and 12 feet tall and everything is, you know, relative to proportion and size and all kind of stuff, you're probably, and you look like uh, one of those Adena guys, okay, that they show reconstruction there, I think you might not have too much trouble picking up large blocks of stones because you would be like as strong as an elephant if you were that big, Okay. A uh, chimpanzee, an adult 200-pound chimpanzee, has the strength of a 1,000-pound linebacker, okay? And who knows what these people were capable of, okay? M strength in muscles has a lot to do with the how many sinew muscle fibers you have in your muscle tissue. Some people in this world have a lot of muscle fiber in their tissue just naturally, okay, like the chimpanzees. Okay, and if anybody would know about somebody that might be like that, okay, it would be me because I lived with the um, estranged wife of, uh, of this guy who is the strongest man in the world, okay, I'm not going to say who he was, Guinness Book Records, strongest man in the world, and the guy could bench press 1,200 pounds. Okay, and he's about six foot three, something like that. Okay, so I lived with his estranged wife. Okay, dated her for two years and lived with her. They had two little kids, and I was a bodybuilder myself, so I mean, I had a little bit of a reputation and whatnot. But 
you know, I had to face this guy like every other day of the week. They had two little girls together that, you know, I lived with in her house. And I had to, you know, this guy came over several times a week. I had to face, who can say that? How many people in this world could say that? Yeah, I had to face the uh, Guinness Book World uh, Record strongest man in the world every other day, and he was hostile and angry. Not many people. <clears throat> okay, so he found this big, giant, huge skeleton. So let's take a look at that big, giant, huge skeleton. Let's take a look at the bullshit story that we hear in Wikipedia here. I just want to, if I say something, I'm sorry, but it's just my feelings towards how they phrase this thing here in a particular way that you know is quite obvious okay and if you got that education i was talking about that john taylor got i was talking about that bad education there you're not going to be able to understand what i'm saying here unfortunately but luckily all the people on my channel got their education after they went to school so but listen to this the expression expression the expression giant of castle now Okay, Castle No. You get that, right? The expression it refers to three bone fragments, a humorous tibia and femoral mid shaft discovered by Jean Vacher de La Pouge in 1890 in the sediment used to cover a Bronze Age burial tumulus. Okay, it's a mound. And then possibly dating back to the Neolithic. According to de La Pouge, the fossil bones may belong to one of the largest humans known to have existed. He estimated from the bone size that the human may have been about 3.5 meter, 11 feet, 6 inches tall. No modern peer-reviewed study has been published about the alleged giant bone fragments. Now, why not? Okay? No peer, no modern peer, wh why? What's, what's the problem? Why don't you get to it? This might be the single most important find. You know, people that went back into the Neolithic time and Paleolithic time could be even further back in time. This could be the most single important discovery ever. And it just, nah, nah, we don't have to look at that. Because then all the people who... Uh, you know, are against religion, they're going to freak out, and then the religious people will freak out, the Bible is real, it's real, whatever it is, and it doesn't mean any of those things, but it doesn't matter, the people are going to freak out, okay, and us scientific people are going to laugh at all these people for being so goofy, okay, dumbasses, all right, so no modern peer review study, well, why the hell not, okay, he sure did one on Lucy, Look at this thing. Okay? Louis Leakey's Australopithecus. Right? This thing is, what is this thing? A couple of bones here. Listen to what this was put at. Several hundred pieces of bone fossils representing 40% of the skeleton of a female of the hominin species. So, you know, this is our ancient ancestor according to them. Okay, it couldn't be of another humanoid because there were no other humanoids. So it couldn't be of another type of humanoid. You know, it's hominin. That's good enough. We just sort of generalize it there because, you know, we know of Neanderthals. So got to say hominin. But, you know, now they know of all these other ones and what the hell are they? Right. So do you see hundreds of pieces of bones here? I don't see hundreds of pieces of bones. I see like, you know, I don't know, a couple of dozen. But it was all glued back together again. Okay, and then they put, you know, they make it like a reconstruction themselves, and the thing looks like, you know, uh, whatever it is, it looks like some kind of weird thing, and that's obviously what's got to be, according to them, all right, so I'm not going to get into it, but look, fuck off, all right, pardon my New York bullshit language there, but that's what it is, okay? So, I why no modern peer review study is done of it, I have no idea, but, and it's the expression of it, you know. Look, they can reconstruct fragmentary skeletal remains now, okay? And this guy is talking about paleoanthropology. 
Okay, we can just take those bones and reconstruct them, and then we'll have these giant people, okay, a giant person there, and, you know, every, everybody's going to freak out and go crazy. Except me, I'm going to be here to hold you some, but, you know, whatever, they can do what they want. All right, so the poems and conclusions were officially... Published in La Nature, Volume 18, along with the image of the bones with the normal size humerus. So that's the picture there, with the normal humerus in the middle. Okay, so, I think it's unnecessary to note that these bones are undeniably human, despite their enormous size. The subject would have been likely size of 3 meters, 50 uh, centimeters tall, I guess. Significantly, these remains were studied by several of the Lepuge's contemporaries who agreed that these were indeed the bones of a giant human, as reported in the August 1890 issue of Popular Science. So, look, it doesn't matter how many professional anthropologists or scientists or, you know, people who are experts in, uh, uh, you know, the skeletal, human skeleton and, uh, you know, the human body, okay, they looked at this thing and said it was human bones, but, you know, still it's got to be the expression, the giant of whatever. It's an expression. It's not a true thing there, but Lucy's fine there with those 40-something bones put together there or whatever. Significantly, these remains were studied by several Lapouche contemporaries who agreed that these were indeed the bones of a giant human, as reported in, to, in the August 1890 issue of Popular Science. Okay, so... They all agreed that it was human, okay? But they don't care about that. It's got to be an expression, whatever. It can't be. And sure, they can reconstruct it now, but hey, nobody's going to do a peer-reviewed thing on it because, uh, you know, they're all scared of having to admit to certain things about the past that they don't want to. In 1918, at Surrey, England, the giant, quote-unquote, skeleton of a man of unusual stature, quote-unquote, was found in a perfect state of preservation at the Wood Yates Barrel Group in Wiltshire. Richard Colt Hoare unearthed a large skeleton and another of a tall and stout man. In 1833, a skeleton laid at full length with a rude, within a rude cyst was discovered at Port Seton, Scotland. Measurements in indicated the remains of a man nearly seven feet high. And again, we have to talk about how they marginalize and minimize this by making an unfair comparison, an unscientific comparison with this, by saying things like it's not beyond the normal parameters of the average size human beings. Well, I'm sorry, that isn't true, because I did all the research on the history of height. Okay, so I know all about it. You can't fool me about it. Okay, so I know it. You can't make that statement. It's an incorrect statement, an unscientific statement, because the average size of human beings today is different than it was in the past. So it, there's no comparison there. Okay, it's not a fair comparison. So if you want to compare them with the people who existed in the past, at the time that these people existed, supposedly, so that's fair. Okay, and the people at this time were five point uh, five foot three inches to five foot five inches tall, with the tallest being of the Irish of five seven. And ch size had not changed significantly since the Stone Age. Okay, according to mainstream, that's what they say. Okay, so somebody of seven foot tall found from this time period was somebody of extremely unusual size. Okay, and then you have to explain that. You see, so it's not so easy, right? And they don't want to get into it for a lot of different political reasons, see? And I'll be like, yeah, it's, it's not that tall. We got people today. Yeah, well, yeah, we got people today, but that's not who we're comparing them to, people today, right? Because the average size has changed significantly from 1800 to now, but before 1800, it was all the same size, going back to the Stone Age, according to mainstream. Little tiny guys, okay? Anybody who's like six and a half feet tall, seven feet tall, standing next to one of these guys, would make them seem kind of shrimpy, right? I apologize to any guys that tall, but, you know, I'm sorry, but next to a seven foot tall guy, you look like a shrimp. 
maybe a jumbo shrimp, but you know, that's a, uh, whatever. Okay, the discovery of giant skeletons in several caves around the U.S. has been a popular subject in recent years. Less known are